Hey, welcome to APC Brampton TV. I'm Pastor Moses. I'm so glad that you're with us here today. Every week, we release powerful messages to encourage and strengthen you in your walk with God. And we hope that this message today will impact your life. Enjoy. Uh, just for a few moments, I, I really want to talk to you about this theme about giving uh, this Christmas away. You're going to stick with me, right? Everybody, bless Richard with me, will you? Appreciate Richard being with us. And, and I want to I want to talk to you about about this theme about giving it away. And particularly, I want us to go to the scripture this morning um, about, actually, I think it's afternoon now. It is afternoon. About what Jesus said that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. This morning, as Pastor Moses was actually speaking, I, I began to think about something. Uh, my mind went to a, a television program. I'm not sure if it's still on, but it, it was on. And and the program was called Hoarders. Anybody ever any anybody ever see uh, Hoarders where people just can't give any thing away and they and they pack their life and then they you know they need an intervention they need people to come and literally rescue them and and, and it's a big ordeal for them it's not something they put on it's 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 literally a mental disorder to be a hoarder is is literally a mental disorder but church I want you to notice something that givers are never uh, at risk of having some kind of a mental disorder have you ever noticed that anybody ever come to a giver and say I think you have a problem I I I think there's something wrong with you. I think we need to deliver you from a spirit of generosity and from a spirit of giving because nobody ever does that. But it's interesting that when it comes to hoarding and it comes to taking, that in its worst condition, it actually is a mental disorder. But even if you don't have a mental disorder in that area, I want you to know that all of us are actually born as takers. Anybody have children? You ever notice you don't have to teach your children to take? Hmm? Children are born naturally to take. Not only their stuff, they'll take your stuff too. Hmm? They don't care that they can't drive the car. They want your keys. They want they want your expensive stuff. I remember my daughter. My daughter had to destroy my speakers. I don't know what it was, but but she figured she had an entitlement to those speakers, and and she would go and pour, poke the little tweeters and and cause me all because she thought it was hers. She thought she thought the Christmas tree was hers. She thought she should climb the Christmas tree and and pull the Christmas tree down. And so everything she thought she could touch. I mean, we had to we had to put barriers all over the house, right? You have to you have to lock up your house, if you will, because children will get into things because we're born with this nature that we are going to be takers. As a matter of fact, you actually have to teach people, you have to teach children to give. And we say things like care, you know, sharing is caring, you know, and, and so you need to share. And they go, mine, mine. You go, no, 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 you need to share. And they go, mine, mine. And you go, no, 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 you don't, you don't want to do that, right? But, but it's, it's, it, right? Why? Because I, I want you to notice something. I want to take you all the way back to the Garden of Eden. I want you to see the nature of God, and I want you to see the human nature. Here's, here's God that creates a paradise within the earth, and he, he puts Adam and Eve right there. As a matter of fact, first Adam, and then God said it's not man, good for man to be alone, and so he even gave Eve into this perfect environment, and, 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 and he gave him responsibility, and he said make the rest of the world look like the garden and expand it all over the world. And, and, and at one point, God even said to Adam, Adam, I, I want you to name the animals. And so Adam began to began to name the, ad, uh, the animals with God. And by the way, my friend, somebody, you know, I heard this statement that, that, that somebody said, Adam must have been a genius. I want you to think about this. If you're God and you create one person and you put them on the face of the earth, how many know God doesn't want to talk to a dummy? Adam must have been a genius. And so here's God communing with Adam and, 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 he, and he puts everything at Adam's disposal. I mean everything. Give him a good looking wife and everything, right? And whatever Adam wanted, God gave it to him. And, then, and he just said, don't eat of that tree. But we know that Adam, you know, disobeyed God. Eve got deceived and disobeyed God. And, and all of a sudden, Adam went from being just like God and he went from being a giver to becoming a taker. And that's why today we have within our hearts this nature of taking. 
But, but not only in Christianity, I want you to notice something that even in the world, they celebrate this idea of giving. They, they understand that around the Christmas time that it is a, it is a what? It is a season of giving. We have, we have goodwill and we have generosity and, and we have all kinds of organizations and companies that go out of their way to, to give cho- you know, children gifts and give to the misfortunate and they, and, and they, and they, you know, they, they, they'll uh, spend their time in soup kitchens and various things because people understand understand that there is something in human nature that is, has to be overcome. That whole selfish idea has to be overcome. And so we do that by a spirit of generosity. We do that by a spirit of giving. So it's not even something that you could say, well, only Christians give. It's not true. Non-Christians give as well. Sometimes, my friend, non-Christians outgive Christians. Now, something's wrong with that, but I'm telling you it's true. I come from the corporate world. I know what it is to give away thousands of dollars, not only at Christmas. You know, they, 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 we call it in the corporate world goodwill. We, we want to be good community citizens, and so we give. They give, and, and not only are corporations giving, but then also you notice in the, in the entertainment, you notice songs and, and movies in particular. You know, you, 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 you read the, the story and you watch the movie of uh, The Christmas Carol, which has the main character of, of, um, of Ebenezer Scrooge, who, who is a mean, nasty guy, and he's a taker. But what, what we enjoy about the movie is that at the end, somehow, you know, his eyes are open and there's, there's a redemption to him and the giver becomes, or the taker becomes the giver and everybody's celebrating, but everybody's in shock saying, what happened to this guy? How did, how did this guy become so mean and so selfish, evicting people in winter and all of a sudden now he's a giver and he wants to be generous and, and the movie leaves you, leaves you with this amazing uplifted feeling. Because you're more blessed when you give. Hmm? You're more blessed when you give, Jesus said, than when you receive. And, and there's another movie. You know, I don't know if you know about our staff, but our, our staff loves to drink coffee, in particular Pastor Moses and I. And not only coffee, we drink real coffee. We drink espresso. I know he's Pakistani, but I'm telling you, he drinks espresso. As a matter of fact, I have another pack. I'm, I'm, I'm redeeming the world, one Pakistani at a time. Praise the Lord. And, and, and I'm getting them on espresso. And so I know you think Pastor Moses, you know, he's, he's handsome and, and he looks great. This is what he looks like on a Sunday morning. But I want you to see what he's going to look like tomorrow morning before he has his first coffee. I kid you not, this, this is Pastor Moses. That's him. You see the you see the hair resemblance there too, right? <laughs> now, every, I'm just kidding. now everybody knows this is the Grinch. He's a, he's a, he's another individual that starts out as a taker and ends up as a giver. He he tries to rob the Who's, you know, Doctor Seuss. You know what? I, some of you are like, Pastor, is that a demon? It's not a demon. Relax. He steals Christmas. He, he robs it. He takes everything. He, he takes their food. He takes their drinks. He takes their, their presents, their, their trees, everything. As a matter of fact, in the story, it says that he didn't even leave a, a scrap that was big enough for a mouse. He, he takes everything and he feels so good inside because, my friends, I want you to know something. Takers feel good for a little while. But then all of a sudden, the story goes that in the morning, he, he begins to hear the who's singing and that he recognizes, what are these people singing about? I took everything that they should put their happiness and their joy in and they're still singing. And all of a sudden, he comes to the realization, perhaps Christmas is more than just the presence. Perhaps there's something more to it. And he gets a revelation and then all of a sudden, the Grinch who stole Christmas all of a sudden gives it back. You know, I get criticized sometimes because people say, well, pastor, you know, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. I know. But the world, for a short time anyway, recognizes that he does. And so I'm going to go with it so that I can proclaim the message of Christ while I have uh, an opportunity. That, that, that doesn't mean that I, I have to get into all the stuff that, that is around, but here's what I do understand, that when they are giving gifts, even to themselves, they understand that the reason for the season is Jesus, and even why we give, we give because God is a giver. Everybody say, God is a giver. God is not a taker. 
Jesus is a giver, the devil's a taker. As a matter of fact, he's a thief, he's a robber, he's a murderer. He takes people by disease, he, he takes people by sickness, he, he deceives people. He is a taker, God is always a giver. And so I want us to look at this verse in the Bible here. I want you to turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 20 there. I want us to stand as we read the word of God. I see in a few moments I'm going to make a few points. I'm going to release you. This is Paul now speaking and Luke writes the book of Acts. Luke is a companion of Paul. And it's interesting here that as Paul is speaking, he's, he's about to go to Jerusalem and then ultimately on to Rome and he gathers the elders and the leaders and, and he begins to give them some last words. And, and so my friends, how many know that, you know, if, if you're going to see someone many times, you're, you're going to treat them very casually, but if you're going to see somebody for the very last time, and this is what was happening here, how many know that you would give some people some incredibly in, important instructions? Here he says in, in Acts chapter 20, verse, uh, let's start at verse um, 33. He says, I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. He says, yes, you yourselves know that these hands provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. He says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. He says, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Now, interesting, you're not going to find these in the Gospels, but here they are. He says, remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed. It is more joyful. It is more healthy. Uh, as a matter of fact, the word even brings out the, the idea of it is more fortunate for you to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and they prayed with them all. And then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all of the words which he spoke that they would not see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. They accompanied him to the ship. You know, you know, my friends, you, you, my, my prayer for you is that you would have people in your life that will accompany you to the ship. Whatever, whatever ship that, that you may be going on, that you just don't have fair weathered friends or fair weathered family, that, but literally you would have people that would stick with you through thick and thin, whether they're going to see you, whether they're not going to see you, and that you will remember these words today. Here's what Jesus himself said, that you are more blessed when you give than when you receive. I want you to high five a few people around you before you're seated and tell them, listen, you're better off when you give than when you receive. Whew. Now, speaking of giving, some people blessed our church with this amazing video wall. We haven't bought it. It's actually a demo. And, and I want to demo the wall for you. And I want to actually show you a, a video clip that Pastor Moses uh, uh, researched and, and, and got for me regarding giving and generosity. And then right after the video, I'm going to come right back up and I'm going to share just a few short um, points with you. And then I'm going to release you today. But AV team, can we show that video? Imagine your friend invites you to a party. You arrive and there's lots of people, decorations, food and drink. There's enough for everyone. When you're hosted by someone that generous, you don't have to worry about your needs. You can just enjoy yourself and focus on the people around you. Yeah, that's what a good host wants for her guests. And this is the picture of the world that we find in the Bible. Creation is an expression of God's generous love. He's the host and humans are his guests in a world of opportunity and abundance. And we're called to keep the party going to spread his goodness. This is a beautiful picture, but it's not the way people experience the world. Rather, we find a world of scarcity and struggle, not abundance. And Jesus grew up in that kind of world, under military occupation, people losing their land or families to debt and poverty. And yet he would say things like this. Look at the birds. They don't store up food for themselves, yet they have enough. Or consider the wildflowers. They're beautiful and abundant, and they don't stress about their existence. And you all should live that way too. 
but surely Jesus knew that things don't always work out. I mean, sometimes there really isn't enough. And Jesus did experience poverty firsthand, but he viewed the world through the story of the Hebrew scriptures, which claimed that our scarcity problem isn't caused by a lack of resources. Rather, the problem is our mindset that God can't be trusted. Maybe God's holding out on me. Maybe there isn't enough, and maybe I need to take matters into my own hands. And once we're deceived into that mindset of scarcity, we can justify the impulse to take care of me and mine before anyone else. And that leads to envy, and anger, violence, and a world where it seems like there's not enough. The party's over, it's turned into a battleground. But God wants humans to experience his generosity, and so he chooses one people, the family of Abraham, and he promises to give them the abundance that he wants for everybody else. God will provide what they need. All they have to do is trust his generosity. And through them, the whole world will see how generous the host really is. But that's not what happens. Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, enter a land of abundance, and they promptly forget the host who gave it to them. They act like it's all theirs and like there's not enough. And it leads to war and Israel's self-destruction. If I were the host of this party, I think I'd just give up. But God doesn't give up. What he does is surprising. He gives another gift. Another gift? Yeah, but this gift is different. What God gives is himself. All right, and Jesus, the host himself, comes to join in on the spoiled party. And notice, Jesus lives with the conviction that there is enough and that our generous host can be trusted. His mindset of abundance allowed him to live sacrificially and generously, even towards his enemies. And Jesus called his followers to trust in God's abundance like him. And that's why he said things like, sell your possessions and give to the poor, or don't worry about your life. He's inviting us to live by a different story, one that is built on trust in God's goodness and love. But living generously doesn't mean life is going to go well. I mean, look at Jesus. He was betrayed by his friends and he suffered. And this was no surprise to Jesus. He knew that people would take advantage of his generosity. In fact, that was his plan. Really? Yeah, think about it. Jesus knows that we're all hopelessly deceived by this lie that there's not enough. Yeah, that lie needs to be defeated. And so that's what Jesus was doing when he gave us the gift of his life. Jesus' death was the ultimate expression of God's generous love. Yeah, God's love can turn death into life and scarcity back into abundance. Or as the Apostle Paul put it, you know the gift of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, that even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And Jesus called his followers to live like the real party has begun. Yes, he called it the kingdom of God. And our invitation to this party is yet another gift, the personal presence of God's own spirit that can teach us how to trust the generosity of the host, just like Jesus did. Yeah, and when you believe there's enough, you start seeing opportunities for generosity everywhere with our time and money, our attention. Yes, one of the most important ways that we can experience the abundance of God's new creation is sharing with others because of our trust that God is the generous host. I love that line that Jesus gave himself, the host gave himself. Four things I want to tell you about being more blessed when you give than when you receive. Number one, I want you to notice that, Avi, you could put this on the board, verse 22, how Paul said this, and see now I go bound in spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me here. My, my, my first point to Dare Church is this. What, what, what is the inner motive? What, what is the inner motive of your heart when it comes to the air? area of giving. In, in other words, my friends, what is on the inside of you? Because if, if you're going to be a giver, then the truth is this, that giving is going to come from inside of you. In other words, what moves you, what motivates you, what inspires you to have to overcome your human nature, which is about scarcity and which is about fear and, and, and trying to gather more than everybody else. And how are you going to overcome that unless you become a giver? 
stir and it has to come on the inside of you. You see, people that have met Jesus and people that have a relationship with Jesus, I, I'm not talking about a religion or a religious system or ritualistic things. When you know Christ, when you have the spirit of Christ, you actually want to be a giver. You actually want to see the face and the expression of others when they are touched by the love of God, when they are touched by the, by the spirit of God and how God uses you to make an impact and to make a difference in your life. You know, I, I think it's amazing this thing that they're, they call pay forward where, you know, you might be in a Tim Hortons and all of a sudden you pay for the person behind you. I've had it happen to me that, that all of a sudden I come to the counter and they, they say, oh, sir, that car over there, uh, they, they, they paid for you. Or, or, or you all of a sudden I've been in a restaurant. I recognize that there's people in there and, and I'll just say, you know what, bring, bring their bill to me. I want to pay their bill. And, and, and just, you know, you watch from the corner as, as people are like confused as to, well, who, who's paying this bill? What do you mean? I don't have to pay. And, and my friends, I want you to notice something. You don't have to get the credit. You don't have to be thanked. They don't have to send you a card or a cake, but, but there's something that you and Jesus know on the inside. It's almost like we have a secret God. This is why Jesus even said, my friends, the things that you do secretly will be rewarded to you openly. Hmm? We don't give and then wonder, mm, I wonder what they're going to give to me. We, we don't give and say, well, you know, I spent $100 on you. I'm pretty sure this gift is 50 bucks. Listen, listen, I know families, you know, there, there's, a, there's, an Italian, there's an Italian cake called panettone. It's not named after me, but anybody ever had it? It's, it comes out only twice a year, Christmas and Easter. But watch this, my friends. I've, I've known people that will mark the bottom of the box just to see if the gift is coming back to them. There's something wrong with you. Your, your head needs to get right because, because listen, we don't, we don't give so that we will receive. As a matter of fact, Paul said to the Ephesians, he said, what you do for others, God is going to do for you. So sometimes we do things and then we expect, oh, you're, 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 you owe me back. No, no, no. Here's what the Bible says for believers. When you do, when you give, don't look to the people that you gave to do for you. God's going to do it for you because God is not un unfaithful. God's not unrighteous. God, God has perfect records. And even if you think the score is not always settled here on earth, I want you to know there's perfect accounts in heaven. You're not going to get every blessing here, my friend, but I want you to know when you get to heaven, God has not only a place for you, God has blessing for you. Somebody praise God. Come on. So here's the question. Here's the question. Why do we always have to challenge people? Why do, we have to, why do we always have to press people and challenge and make sure you give and make sure you go here and make sure you come? And even this morning in the 9 a.m. service, when we talked about caroling at the mall, I know what people are thinking. They're like, listen, pastor, I came to the early service. You want me to go home and then come back to the mall to carol? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That is my expectation because we ought to be the greatest givers. And my friends, listen, it is a minor miracle that a secular mall like the Bramley City Center would even open up to somebody like us. We get to say whatever we want. Just be a blessing. We're just there to be a blessing. We're, we're there to say, listen, you don't have to pay us. We don't, we don't even want to be taken. We just, we just want to give. We just want to bless people. And people will just gather and they, and they begin to listen to us. And, and you're like, well, pastor, I don't know how to sing. It doesn't matter. Just be like Millie Vanilli and move your lips. Just lip sync because we got other people that can carry you. Don't worry. Pastor Moses and I, we will be Millie Vanilli today. We might even do a few like, mm, 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 mm. that was a really bad moonwalk, all right? But because here's what's amazing about God. You see, see, we, we, we always want to look to the qualified and the people that have an abundance to give. But, but I want you to notice something in the Bible, my friends, that the widows in the Bible were some of the greatest givers. It's not that they always had an abundance, but they gave out of their scarcity. They gave not because they had. Many times they gave because they just love God. The people that say, well, when I get, I will give. Untrue. Because if you won't give little, you'll never give a lot. Giving is a heart condition. 
It's not about abundance. And so I, I, began, I began to do some research, even for those of you that are business owners, you're in the secular, because you know my heart is always there, and, and even in emotional intelligence. Here's what I found out, statistically proven, even in secular circles, that givers succeed in every category over takers. As a matter of fact, they say that, that, that givers have a long-term longevity over takers. So give her a, they last longer because takers, watch this, takers take quickly, but they vanish out quickly as well. But listen to this statistic. Listen, you got to catch this. It requires two to three more givers to outperform the negative impact of one taker. Hmm? You need two to three givers, whatever that may be, not just money, it could be emotionally, well, whatever it may be. You need two to three times more givers to outperform the impact of one taker. And then I began to ask the question, though, I thought, go ahead, my brother Richard. I began to ask the question, I thought, you know, God has said, is it always bad to be a taker? Like, like, Aren't there some good things about being a taker? And, and so, you know, I began to think about this, and I thought there is. Because not only do I want you to be a giver today, my friends, I, I also want you to be a taker. You're like, Pastor, you're, you're like all over the map. Like, you got, you got, you got issues today. No, listen, listen. Because at the end of the day, here's what I really want you to be. I want you to be a contributor. Everybody say contributor. Because I thought about this and I thought, you know, what is a contributor? A contributor is a giver and a taker. But, but pastor, you're telling us that givers outperform takers. How can I become a taker? But watch this. Takers can take initiative. Takers can take control. Takers can take responsibility. Uh, takers can take accountability. Uh, takers can take ownership. Hmm? So, so there must be a positive perspective to taking. Now watch this. If you take solely for selfish reasons, then you're off base. But if you're going to be actually a taker, I want you to notice that even in your taking, because you're going to bless others and because you're going to be a contributor. Listen, my friends, when you are a giver, even when you take, you're actually becoming a blessing. Somebody ought to praise God for that. My uncle used to have a saying, you know, he would come to the meetings and my, my, my uncle didn't have patience for meetings. And so he would say to me, listen, take your time, but hurry up. <laughs> so, so you could even, you know, you could even take your time. I went, you know, I felt so good. He would always have a pause in there. Like I thought, oh, take my time. Then he'd go, but hurry up. And so I, 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 I've lived by those, I've lived by those words. I notice, notice the second point here. Notice the second point. Paul begins to talk about finishing the race with joy. Listen to what he said to the Galatians. He says, let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith. Here's, here's what Paul is saying. He said, listen, you can actually become tired of doing good. Because you have to overcome a lot of negativity. You have to, you have to overcome a lot of the takers. You actually got to be intentional. You got to work harder at giving than you do to receive. It takes no energy to receive. It actually takes no energy to receive, if you will, or to take something. But it takes intentionality to, my friends, be a giver and begin to understand where you need to give, where you need to put your energy, where you, where you need to put your effort. I'm telling you, it takes more time. It takes more energy. And so we can get tired. But Paul said this, don't get tired. Don't get weary. Don't, don't, let, don't let doing good to all weary you out because somewhere there is a, a replenishment. Somewhere if you don't lose heart, somewhere if you don't give up, he says you're going to reap. You're going to reap the harvest, which says to me, if you give up. Well, why would I give up, pastor? Well, some people may offend you. Maybe you get tired of constantly giving. How many have, oh, don't put up your hand, but how many, how many, because they might be in the room, right? But how many people, you're like, I give and I give and I give and I give and all they do is take and they take and they take and they take. And that can become wearying. And you're like, I don't need this. I don't need to do this. This is, this is exhausting. And, and they take advantage of me and they, you know, they, 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 you know, they skate circles around me and it's just not fair and it's not right. But my friends, I want you to know something. You don't live in a fair world. 
And so we're called to be givers, even to those, can I say it this way, that don't deserve it. Mm, come on, somebody. As a matter of fact, you really want to show your Christianity? The way you show your Christianity is by giving to people that truly don't deserve it. My friends, listen, it's easy to give to people that deserve it. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, even the unbelievers do that. Even the heathens do that. Anybody can give to people that deserve it and they're going to give it back. But can you give to somebody that you know you truly don't deserve it? Now, let me just help you. Please don't leave here today and go, listen, you don't deserve it. But I'm going to be good to you. No, no, that's not what I, yeah. Because that cancels out the whole spirit of what Jesus is talking about. I want you to see some principles. To whom much is given, much is required. I give because much has been given to me. I want you to notice that blessing follows the giver. I want you to notice that we give to give, we don't give to get. Number four, this one's important. We ask people to give equal sacrifice, not equal giving. This is why Paul even said in the Bible, he says, command those that are rich among you. He didn't say command the poor. He said command those. They have a responsibility to have this world's goods. Number five, my friends, live by this. Give more than you get. I don't know about you. God has done amazing things in my life. And, and, and I, I just want to give. This is why even at the banquet, I have to tell you this amazing story. Even at the banquet, people are like, this guy like, just loves giving stuff away. I do. And I, I'm so thankful. You know, I went to people that just asked for their generosity. And will you, will you sponsor the banquet? And, and people giving me like $500, the, the grand prize, $1,500. As, as a matter of fact, I think on Friday night, if, if, if I'm correct, by retail value, we gave away all over $5,000 in, in prizes. $5,000, why? Because people that are, that are generous are just saying, Pastor, here, I'm not even asking, I need a tax receipt. No, no, they just, they just gave above their tithe, above, above their giving. But something happened last Friday. I gotta tell you this story. Because giving in season, giving in, and, and harvesting are in different seasons. But I, I gotta tell you this story. I, I took the staff down to the Eaton Center on, um, on their day off. <laughs> Honestly, it was our day off. And I said, hey, let's spend some more time together. That's when you know that people really like you or they feel like they have to be sacrificial. You know what I'm saying? And so we all went down to the Eaton Center and, and uh, we, we did the shopping. We're doing all, we were so excited. We're going, Pastor Mo and I, we were the best shoppers. Man, we put the women to shame that day. Never mind this. Uh, let, let me, you, you, you ain't got my shopping anointing, ladies. Let me tell you. <laughs> so we're getting deals and we're, you know, and then all of a sudden we got hungry because our staff loves to eat and it's one of the best things we do. And so, and so we come out of the restaurant and we were putting on our coats and right in the middle of the eating center, we must have put down the bags and we had bought the Google Nest hubs, which um, our, our little Indian friend, is he here right now? Is uh, Andrew's here? Is he still recovering from his victory? And so uh, the karaoke winner got it. The young people got it. And, and, and all of a sudden, it took us a Wednesday to figure out we were missing these gifts. We had left them in the mall on Black Friday. We called all the stores. We called the restaurant. We called all the stores we'd gone into. This store, that store. Nobody had it. I felt so bad. Unbeknownst to me, the staff had had a meeting behind my back and, and um, they had this meeting and all of a sudden I got, you know, I got a phone call and they said, Pastor, we had a meeting and we have figured out it's your fault. <laughs> and they all, to, uh, you know, they were like, yeah, we're pretty sure it was you, you know, and I'm, and I'm like, I tried everything. I said, no, I think I was in the bathroom. I think I was, and they said, no, no, we're pretty sure it was you. And so I, saw, I felt bad. Honestly, I felt bad. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to buy these gifts out of my own pocket. I'm going to replace them. They were retail, 170 bucks or something, but we got an amazing deal on them. And, and so all of a sudden, I, be, I began to pray. And I said, Lord, there's an anointing in the Bible for recovery. I've, by, my, by the way, I prayed with a lady this morning after the first service. I have a faith for recovery. My friends, my truck was stolen right off my driveway a few years ago. And I prayed and I said, God... Not even that I want the truck back, but by the principle of the thing, I said, I want my truck back. I want this truck delivered to my house. And you know what, church? They found my truck in a crate, 
in Montreal on its way to Africa. But that was my truck and I wanted my truck back and God got my truck back. So I have a faith for recovery. So I begin to pray. I begin to pray and I, first of all, I said, Father, forgive the staff. <laughs> they know not what they do. So I said, let this transgression not be against them. So we were, and so, <laughs> anyway, they're still under guilt right now. But anyway, so, so I began to pray and I said, Lord, you know what? We were out doing a good thing and I want to be a giver and I want these, I want these gifts back. And, and all of a sudden I was going to go Friday morning to go buy them. Thursday I'm at school and I get a text from Candice. She goes, pastor, pastor, they have found the Google Nest hubs. I said, no way, where are they? She said, they're in the restaurant. Friday morning, I drive back down there right after the storm and, and I speak to the lady, you gotta catch this, you gotta catch this. So I, I said, she's the hostess. And I said, dear, I said, I have to know the story here because this is important to me. She says, sir, I remember you. I remember speaking to you. She said, I don't know. She goes, you guys had left the restaurant. She goes, and all of a sudden, we saw this bag in the middle of the mall. I mean, hundreds of people, Black Friday, passing around. They pick, up the, they, they pick up the bag. My friends, I want to tell you something. When you're on assignment, God will watch over your stuff. So it gets better. It gets better. So she goes, you know, we brought it in, but she goes, the first time you called, we didn't think we had it because our manager hit it so well that nobody found it. But then we found it, and that's why we called. And, and watch what she says to me. And, and I said, she goes, tell me about these gifts. I said, listen, I said, this is for a charity. This is, these aren't my personal gifts. These are, these are a giveaway. She goes, oh, she goes, I love these stories. She goes, she goes, you know what, sir? I think this is God. No word of a lie. As a matter of fact, go on Google, Mercado, Rest Mercado Restaurant. I actually put on a, a little thing on there thanking them. But I said to her, what did you say? She said, you know, I think this is God. This is like a, this is like a God thing. I think God does stuff like this. I said, really? You, you think so? She goes, yeah. I said, you know, I agree with you. Took them went to the banquet, we gave them away, I get home. Pastor Carolyn goes, did you tell her that you were a pastor? I said, honey, why ruin the moment? Why? <laughs> that woman is preaching at me, I'm not gonna ruin the moment by saying I'm a pastor. She's thanking God, I'm just in the inside. You know, you know what I think God was saying to me, he was going, son, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna speak through the unbeliever. I want you to know this was me. I'm telling you, my friends, listen, 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 listen. When, when, when you're a giver, listen, when you're a giver, you get to create these stories. I have told this story over. I'm gonna to continue to tell this story because my friends, givers have stories and all takers have is nothing. Everybody say, givers have stories. All right, I got to land this plane. Notice what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Watch the statistics that I, I found out. Mentally and emotionally, givers are much healthier according to statistics. Taking has a very temporary satisfaction. It has an expiry date. Watch this. You may have a lot of things and certainly, but you may be empty on the inside. See, you, my friends, your life isn't measured by the things that you accumulate. Your life is measured, the healthiness of your heart, of your mind, of your soul, isn't measured by the stuff that you have or the name brand stuff that you have. And, and I got to say something. We were walking through the mall. I wasn't going to say this, Pastor Moses, but I'm going to say it now. We're walking through the mall. Pastor Moses and I are shopping. And all of a sudden, I don't know if we went into Under Armour or something like that. And we're looking at running shoes. And Pastor Moses speaks to me. He says, Pastor... He said, have you heard of this thing called preachers and sneakers? I said, what are you talking about, bro? He says, it's like an Instagram thing where, where, where these preachers get pictures taken of them and they're wearing these sneakers and then they go on this Instagram thing. And my friends, watch this. Some of these preachers are wearing sneakers that are $5,000. I like, I, I, church, I want to just say something. I have an issue with that. I believe in prosperity, but I am sorry. I, I am sorry, but for you as a preacher of the Bible and the Word of God to go spend $5,000 on a pair of sneakers and then post it for the world to see, 
I'm online today. I'm telling you right now, I have a problem with that. I don't think that is a proper demonstration of the God that we serve. That's just not right. I'm going to call it the way it is. I don't care if you can afford a $5,000 pair of sneakers. It's just not right. And I think it conveys the wrong message to people. And this is why Christianity has a black eye today. Because we do this thing. Listen, that's not the spirit of God. You don't have to wear $5,000 sneakers to, to just demonstrate, oh, God is blessing me. God's blessing you. Hey, preacher boy, why don't you give the shoes away? Go give them to some poor person on the street and make their day. Maybe they could sell it. You know what they could do with 5,000 bucks? You don't need $5,000 sneakers to preach the word of God. Whew, I feel better. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to get hate mail on that one, but it's okay. And by the way, my friends, let me, and I, I'm not speaking, watch this. I'm not speaking out of po a poverty mentality. But I believe that just some things are just not right. Number four, I want you to see what Paul says. He says here, he says, I want you to support the poor. Worship team, you can come up. Matthew 26, Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. You know, the day after Christmas is what? What's that day after Christmas? You know what Boxing Day was originally? Boxing Day was the day that people like you and I, after they'd gathered with their families on Christmas and had an incredible feast and gifts and they would actually take boxes and they would begin to pack the abundance or the things that they received more of or even sacrificially and, and they actually would box these things and they would give it to the poor and it was called Boxing Day. But you see, today, Boxing Day is about a different kind of box. See, see, I want you to see how the world has changed because Boxing Day now is like you get up at 4 a.m. in the morning and you line up like a moron, <laughs> freezing your little tutu off <laughs> because somebody has told you that they've got a DVD that you can't live without or a computer and they run you over. And, and, and Sister Bella, that's even before you get to the store because some idiot is gonna fight you for a parking spot. I mean, I mean, church, we have people, I've, I've seen this happen. I, I had an individual stand in front of a parking spot, not in their car, like stand. I said, sir, wh what are you doing? I'm holding this spot. Yeah, but you're not a car. I said, get out of the way because a parking spot is for a car. He says, I'm holding it. I said, for who? He said, my friend. I said, is your friend here? No, he said, my friend is coming. I said, does your friend have a car? Or are the both of you just gonna stand in the spot together? And I want to tell you the truth. These, and I got Pastor Charles going, baby, let's just go. Let's, I'm like, no, no, no. I have to understand why the man is standing on the spot. And he doesn't have a car. But watch this. Because if you don't have emotional intelligence, this is the way things get escalated. Pretty soon you hear that somebody got stabbed, somebody got run over. Right? Because <laughs> you should have got stabbed and run over. Is that what you said? Now, if you run them over first, technically you don't have to stab them. Anyway, that's another, that's another sermon, but <laughs> I'm just being logical, Pastor Mo. Just work with me here. But, but, but what am I saying? What I'm saying is, so we line up at 4 a.m. We're going to run over people, and then they're probably going to have two items, if that, and then they're going to try and upsell you anyway. But, but I want you to see how when we used to take care of the poor, now it's about how can we get more? Because I got to have that DVD. And I got to have that iPad, but in six months, they're going to come out and tell you that the previous iPad is garbage and you need the new one. And then we go, oh, 
Me too, by the way. I, I, I can be. A, I, I'm an electronic junkie. I'll, I'll be honest with you. So I'm, I'm the first one drinking the Kool Aid. I'll, I'll confess. But, 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 but they have us messed up this way. That's why Friday night I saw some of the people's faces and reactions. I had this one individual. He won the. He won the iPad. He doesn't come to our church. He came to me. He said, Pastor, please tell me who donated this iPad. I really want to thank this person. I love it when people receive things and they're so thankful and, and truly they, they really need it and they'll enjoy it. You know what, church? Maybe there's things around your house. Maybe, and I'm going to close, maybe, maybe there are things that you don't even look at anymore that someone else would just absolutely be thrilled to have. Sister Carolyn went out and Pastor Carolyn went out and bought us this... Um, it's like a deep fryer, but it doesn't fry. It's like a, it's an air fryer. And we, we looked at it. We're like, wow, an air fryer. This is going to be like so cool. Fried chicken that is going to be good for us. And wow, can't wait, man. Can't wait. The air fryer experience. <laughs> and, and you know how many times we've used the air fryer? I don't even know where it is right now. Is it in the basement? <laughs> you ought to give it to a poor person, honestly. But you know, we were like, oh my, an air fryer. I've always wanted an air fryer. <sighs> Can I just help you, church? If you're going to fry, go all the way. Huh? If you're going to fry, come on, help me out, Richard. If you're going to fry, Get the whole oil experience, praise God. I mean, you might as well get it all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know the Indian people, they're amening me, right, bro? Right now, they, they're like, fry it all. Fry it all, pastor. Fry it all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close. 1 John 3, 17, he says, But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart, how does the love of God abide in him? Father, I thank you for your people. I bless your people today. I thank you that the love of God abides in us. Father, I thank you that even today, between services, I experience the love of God that we experience the love of God from sometimes places we just are not expecting. Father, thank you for the surprises you give us. I just love you so much, Daddy. And I bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give God praise.